Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. I know who you are. The Country the Devil Made Me Do is the brand new film that's released on HBO Max and in theaters, and is the third main film of eight in the Conjuring franchise. Once again, it stars Patrick Wilson, Vera Farmiga, and new cast members Rory O'Connor, Sarah Catherine Huck, Julia Hilliard, and John Noble join the cast. The film is directed by Michael Chavis, who f- previously directed one of the Conjuring franchise films, The Curse of La Llorona, and talks about the Warrens, once again played by um, Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga, another true story-based files of the Warrens as true story. Arnie Johnson commits a murder, but when he pleads not guilty due to demonic possession, which is the first court case of all time here in the United States that someone pled not guilty due to demonic possession. The film is an hour and 52 minutes and is rated R. My name is Max. We have a brand new movie review here on Max Talks Movies. We're talking about the Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. Before we get started with my review, please leave a thumbs up button, guys. That's the like button. That's the best way to support this YouTube channel. Gets us more algorithm so more people can check out this review. Also, please comment down below your thoughts of this film. Tell me, first of all, if you've already seen the film, did you see it on HBO Max or did you go see this in a movie theater? And tell me, where does it stack for you in The Conjuring franchise? Not just these three films, but also the entire eight film franchise now. If you have not seen it, tell me, will you check this one out? this weekend on either HBO Max or in theaters. Please subscribe to movie reviews, TV show reviews, a box office breakdown show, rankings, all of the above here on the channel. So please consider subscribing and ringing that bell so notified when these videos drop. Let's get my thoughts on The Conjuring. The devil made me do it. I was really pumped for this film, guys. I saw this in IMAX, so the biggest screen possible with a pretty large crowd here on opening night, Friday night here in Los Angeles. And um. I love the first two movies. Um, For me, it's the rest of the films that for me are nowhere near up to par as the main two Conjuring films. And the main reason why is that Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga are not mainstays with the, with the spinoff movies at all. They pop in in The Nun, they pop in the first 10, 15 minutes of Annabelle Comes Home. But other than that, they're really not part of the spinoff. They're the main characters of the first two films. But I was also skeptical because this is the first film in the three main films that James Wan did not direct the film. He still does have a story credit with the movie, which is, a, which is great to see him still be involved with the franchise. But he is not directing it. As I said, Michael Chavis is directing it, who directed The Curse of La Llorona, which for me is the most forgettable film in the entire uh, universe. And I really did not like that movie seeing it in theater. So that's why, again, skeptical there. But this true case of Arnie Johnson, again, this is a true case of how Arnie Johnson committed um, a murder and he pled to himself. He said out loud, yeah, he pled not guilty due to demonic possession, which was the first time in the history of the United States someone did that and the Warrens did investigate this in real life. Of course, it's a mixture of this true life case with some fantasy horror stuff added to the movie. So overall, guys, I really enjoyed this film. I know that this film, once again, for me, just kind of feels divisive. Um, I can see people really not liking, I can see people not hating the movie, people thinking it's just a mediocre film. I can also see people loving it and really enjoying myself. I really did enjoy myself in the theater going back with these characters. And that's the biggest reason why this movie works for me and why this film is above all of the spinoff movies. That's because we have Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga as Ed and Lorraine Warren in the main role with the movie. And they are so, so fantastic in the movie, not just by themselves, but they're, they really seem like a real couple. And the, the chemistry between Farmiga and Wilson is so, so good. You buy into every scene they're in together. And even though sometimes the movie can feel boring or nothing's really happening or we're just spewing out exposition, because these two characters are on screen doing stuff in scenes that might not be fun, it's still enjoyable and watchable to watch because these are two characters that I would die to see so many more times in this franchise. They're easily the two of the, the best horror characters we've seen in a long time, in my opinion. They're just so well done. You care about both of them individually. And they both go through completely different things throughout the film. Now, obviously, the main goal is them staying together, not people not using their relationship as a weakness. But Patrick Wilson has a heart attack early in the film. And that's kind of a defect for him throughout the film that he has to run through the forest 
or chase down Lorraine at some point, that becomes a factor. And Vera Farmiga has a connection to the villain of the movie. And we kind of see how she dives into that as well. We also have another couple dynamic, which is Arnie Johnson and his girlfriend, David Gretel, played by Rory O'Connor and Sarah Catherine Hook. I was pleasantly surprised how good those two actors were there. And I also bought their relationship as well in the film. It's going to be one of the most underrated parts of the film, but I really did buy, first of all, Rory O'Connor has a lot on his shoulders in the first 25, 30 minutes of the film as we're seeing him becoming possessed and how that affects the eventual murder that puts him in prison and how that affects his girlfriend. Um, played by Sarah Catherine Huck. She's a part, she also helps out the, Laura, the, the Warrens in this investigation. Um, and she was also very good in the film. You really buy both of these relationships. Obviously way more you buy into Farmiga and Wilson, but I was shocked at how much I cared about the Arnie Johnson and his girlfriend storyline. I thought that O'Connor and Huck were really great in the film. Um, also Dave, Josh, John Noble is in the movie. He plays um, a former, priest who is familiar with what they what the Warrens need to figure out with uh, this plot and he has he's also very excellent in the film um, and for me as well the, the film is very well helmed way better directed than Curse of La Llorona a uh, complete step up over that movie it also um, has some really amazing editing some lighting stuff that works really well in the film and at times you do again you're really wrapped up in the story it's a lot more story driven emotionally invested in the characters than it is taking itself as a complete horror movie. now this is a definite horror movie but for me out of the three main films this is by far the least scary of the three films in my opinion i was not scared really that much during the film i would never jumped out of my seat or flinched at all um, a lot of the jump scares sadly the two really good ones that i really liked were both in the trailer of the movie um and the other one just felt like jump scares at times but for me i still even though the jump scares could have been very predictable and the scares definitely were predictable in the movie i still cared about our characters making it through this film and that's a test to these actors the writing of these characters as well and a lot of these characters again are very surface level characters that the actors and the directors really take to a whole another level especially wilson and farmiga who do so much of the hard work and they are clearly the main characters of the film which is why this film and really this trilogy of the main films in the conjuring films all work is because these two characters are the lead characters you're really enveloped in their story and it was great to see them back on screen. I was smiling a lot. They have a really good dynamic um, together. Um, as I said, there are, a bit, there are some few issues. For me, at times, the film gets a little too repetitive because I guess it's an investigation movie when you have the warrants. But for me, at too many points, there were just scenes just to talk about exposition, about um, the relationship um, between Arnie Johnson and his girlfriend, Arnie Johnson's background. There were just a little too many scenes of exposition for my liking. I know it's an investigation, again, I know it's an investigation movie and some people won't even care. But for me, at times there was a little bit too much exposition going on in the film. Also, I, I would have liked the villain's motive to be a bit more clear. They do touch on why the villain is possibly doing these things uh, possibly cursing the house, um, but they really don't dive deep enough to care about the villain at all. Your main focus is the heroes, which I totally get doing, but also it would have been a lot more fascinating if we got a little bit more background on the villain of the movie who looks cool um, and um, some of the scenes that happens involving this person are very well done. Again, they didn't show any of this in the trailer, so I don't want to get too spoil. I'm not going to get spoiler at all here, but the villain, they should have dove a little bit deeper on the motive um, of the villain. As I said, the film is not that scary, in my opinion. A lot of the jump scares you can see coming a mile away. The score goes off. It's a lot of just quiet, and then boom, a jump scare happens. That happens multiple times throughout the film. But for me, what makes this film work on so many levels is the main Warren story and the Warren dynamic and this Arnie Duncan and Debbie um, relationship. Both of those together work really well together. The story really carries this film more than its horror and thrills. 
which made this film a really fun watch for me. I'm, I'm going to be a bit higher than most people on this film. I'm going to give Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, a four out of five stars. I'm going to give this film a 78%. It's an extremely, I think it's a very good movie. Um, if Now, I do not believe that it's better than Conjuring 1 or 2, but I do believe it is better than the spinoffs, all of the spinoffs, in my opinion. These three are clear head and shoulders above any of the Annabelle, the Nun spinoffs. Now, also, people have asked me is, do you have to see a Conjuring film to see this movie? You absolutely do. Now, you're not, you might not have to see the Annabelle films or The Nun or La Llorona, but it would really help the experience by seeing the first two Conjuring films to actually, because you'll actually care a lot about our main Warren characters. I hope we get a fourth one. I want to see these two characters on screen all the time. They are so good. I did see this in the theater. Please go see this in the theater. It really helps the horror experience. It's on IMAX. There's an IMAX near you. Also, please check it out on IMAX. So that's my review of The Conjuring 3, The Devil Made Me Do It. Please consider liking the video, subscribing, comment down below your thoughts. Do you agree with me? Disagree with me? I know I'm a bit high on this movie more than most people. Um, but is it a quiet place part two? No, it's not. But I still, for some reason, the charm of this movie really got to me. So that's why I really enjoy this film. So guys, thank you so much for joining me on my review. A lot more movie and TV reviews as basically every week now, every Friday, there'll be a big new movie release. You know, every Friday, at least I'll be giving you a new review of a new movie. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I'll see you guys very, very soon to see where this movie fits on the box office on Monday.